Und damit ein herzliches Willkommen und Hallo zu einem weiteren Part Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Ich bin es am Zimmer fix. Wow, 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 wow. Beim letzten Mal haben wir Kapitel 6 Wunden abgeschlossen. Doch positiv auf jeden Fall nicht. Wir wurden angegriffen wieder von Torna, konnten diese zurückschlagen, bis dann schließlich Jin und Malus aufgetaucht sind. Malus war stiller Zuschauer, aber äh, Jin hat uns mit einem Zug vernichtend geschlagen. Er hat noch eine Kraft, die selbst äh, die vom Müffel untersteigt, mit der Elementpartikel, was wir noch nicht so ganz genau wissen, was das bedeutet, kontrollieren kann. Er hat uns besiegt und hätte um einen Heil Rex und den Rest seines Teams getötet. Doch Myf äh, Pyra, die wieder zurückgewechselt hat, hat sich hier geopfert und den Jins Gefangenschaft begeben. Sie und er hat nun äh, mit, äh, mit sich mit ihm zusammengetan, um die Tore nach Elysium zu öffnen. Wir stehen nun allein da. Mifra ist schwer verwundet, Py äh, Pyra und äh, ja, Jin mit seinem Plan hier die Menschen auszulöschen, geht äh, nun, wo es aussieht, in die finale Runde. Die Frage, wie es natürlich nun ausgeht, wenn wir mit speichern, liebe Leute, seht ihr es? Pyra, Mifra sind weg und die Frage ist, wie unser Weg nun weitergeht. Wir werden aber weitergehen und egal, was es kostet, weitermachen. Auch im nächsten Kapitel. Jetzt hätte eigentlich die Kapitelauswahl <lacht> kommen sollen. Kapitel 7. Erkenntnis. Traitor Amalthus. What is it? I have a report to make regarding the situation with the Aegis in Tantal. Please, come inside. Yes, your eminence. So, Jin finally has his hands on the Aegis. It seems the boy wasn't good for much after all. Unless... He can find what is lost. Your Eminence? Hector. Yes? Prepare the ceremony. At once, Praetor.
Rex Rex still sleeping? It two days now. His injuries were quite severe. The worst is over. But his body needs time to recover. He'd better get well soon, or... Rex? What's that? I'm leaving. But... where will you go? Good question. Can't live on Gramps anymore. Maybe... I'll head for Argentum. Rex? You... What the hell are you talking about, Argenta? What about Pyra? Do you know how desperate the situation is? Or have you finally lost it, you idiot? I know, okay? It's just... Just what? I'm done. Done? When I became the driver of the Aegis, her driver, I felt like I could do anything. But I was just kidding myself. All I've managed to do is hurt her. Again and again. So... I'm done. Oh, for crying out loud, Rex! She got herself caught to save you! I know. So what? So what? Those guys are way out of my league. I can't beat them. It's hopeless. I understand that now. She'll be safe with them. They're not gonna hurt her like I do. So, I'm leaving. I've just been kidding myself all along. Me, a driver, in the end, salvaging is all. You bloody ah! idiot! <sighs> Hurts, yeah? But that pain's nothing compared to what Pyra must be feeling right now. She went with those bastards knowing full well how much you would hurt. For our sake, not us. I get it, I know. But what do you want me to do? I couldn't even slow him down. Even the artifice's attack couldn't touch him. What chance do I have against a guy like that? The more I fight, the more Pyra gets hurt. She'll be... Better off without me by her side. Do you actually mean that? Do you not have the slightest idea how it felt for her to leave you? With me here? He'll suffer even more. Lose even more. So maybe... Maybe Rex is better off without me. Rex, and the whole world, they don't need me. That's just how it feels. Pyra thought you'd be better off if she was dead. Did you know that? She is planning to sacrifice herself to defeat them. Huh? You drove her to this, but here you are, giving up! You said you'd get Pyra to Elysium, didn't you? You'll eat your words just like that? Hey, Mum? Dad? It's been a while. A ton happened, you know? I became a driver. And this girl... is Pyra. My new partner. I know you'd love her. We... We're going to Elysium. Pyra and me. I don't know what's coming next, but you'll be watching over us. Right, guys? Oh. Forget it. We're a rescuer on our own. This loser, he's not the Rex we joined up with. Let him go wherever the hell he wants. Come now. Let's not start fighting amongst... Let's give them a chance to work this out. Shall we? You know, I... Nia, quite right. Rex definitely not behaved like himself. Giving up after one loss? That not Rex I know at all. But... Now is not time for excuses! Oh, me! <gasps> but... 
Poppy? Poppy is hurt to see Rex like this. Poppy and Master Pun are not real Blade and Driver. So Poppy and Master Pun looked up to Rex lots. Rex worked very, very hard to get this far. When Rex tries hard, Poppy and Master Pond try hard. Rex like bullseye we aim for. Without Rex, we not know which way to go. So please, Rex cannot give up and stop here. Poppy. My prince? Chum! Huh? My old man wants to see you. Time to go. Ach, liebe Leute. Und so geht es wieder weiter. Ohne Pyra. Ohne Mifra. Wieder auf uns gestellt. Ich muss euch sagen, das war vielleicht die äh, also emotionalste Szene, die wir bis dato in dem Spiel hatten. Wir hatten zwar schon einige schöne, aber ich fand, das war persönlich die, die mich am härtesten jetzt hier getroffen haben. Hat wirklich, äh, die, wie gesagt, ähm, dass Rex hier aufgibt, das muss ich sagen, nicht ganz unverständlich bei dem all, was passiert ist. Und äh, die Worte, die Jin halt ihm zum Ende hier hingeworfen hat, wie gesagt, dass er immer nur Leid und Verderben für seine Klinge bringt, das hat ihn doch durchaus getroffen. Aber wirklich, er äh, hat das, das mit Poppy. Ich meine, ganz ehrlich, aber das ist so ein schräges, doofes Duo. Das wissen wir alle, liebe Leute. Aber so dieser, dieser eine Satz, so, hey, wir sind äh, kein äh, richtiger Meister, wir sind kein richtiger Klinge. Und ich meine, Rex war ja anfangs auch kein richtiger Meister. Und äh, nur dank der Aegis ist er hier zu einem geworden. Und ach, liebe Leute, das, das, das fand ich sehr, sehr schön. Hab mich jetzt hier sehr getroffen. Nun gut, lehnen wir mal uns nichts, Vater. Tja. Ein kleines Dankeschön wäre übrigens nett, nur so als kleines Ding. Are you all right to be up and about? Yeah. I'm all healed up. Sincere apologies. If I hadn't attempted to destroy the Aegis, they would never have. If you'd done nothing, they'd have come for her anyway. You're not to blame, Your Majesty. It's. My fault. Five hundred years ago, this kingdom was rent in twain. Some followed Adam, who sought to live with blades and titans as equals. Others opposed him, preferring to consider humans as the masters and titans as our tools. When Adam returned to the Aether, his rivals seized power. Leveraging the power of the Omega Fetter, they declared themselves the Tantalese Royal Dynasty. Claiming they were the hero Adam's descendants. Precisely. My ancestors merely used the name of the beloved Adam in order to win over the people. Mm. Before long, we resolved to protect ourselves from meddlesome foreigners by descending deep into the Cloud Sea, taking the dirty secret of our family's lineage with us. The Praetorium, for their part, did not protest. Can you guess why? No. They offered to stay silent in exchange for a certain resource. An annual tribute comprising a fixed quantity of core chips. I have something I wish to show you. What is it? What is this? This is Gembu's ether flow. The Titan draws in the fabric of the Cloud Sea and uses it as a source of energy. This energy flows throughout the Titan's body in the form of ether. Refining and crystallizing this ether creates core chips. This process 
is what you see before you. So, in other words, you're siphoning away a portion of the Titan's energy? Our cold climate and poor harvests, they are the unfortunate side effects of this process. I think I'm beginning to understand. Core chips are vital to every nation's military and energy policies. The Praetorium desired this power. How come? All rest at the time was in crisis. But for the Praetorium, it was a precious chance to expand their sphere of influence. So they messled in? As a result, Tantal fell into a chronic energy shortage. Then, well, you saw for yourselves. Near frozen earth, failing crops, the Tantalese people are forced to live in abject poverty. So why not just leave the Cloud Sea? Genbo can move, right? Just go somewhere warmer. They fear contact with other nations. Too afraid it might expose the truth behind the legends they spun about Adam. That would explain their isolationism. Indeed. That was five centuries ago. Now the Aegis has awakened. The Praetorium is demanding we hand over the Omega Feta. They are threatening to reveal our secret if we do not acquiesce. Indola? Threatening you? I get it now. That's what was in that letter. Enough was enough. I couldn't stand by and let the Tantalese people suffer any longer. Therefore, I made a decision. And that's why you? Yes. I knew there was a chance that the Praetorium would use the Aegis against us. But if I could neutralize her power, perhaps we would stand a chance of opposing them. And perhaps by saving my people from poverty, I could absolve the sins of my forefathers. You didn't think about using the Aegis's power yourself? Wielding such power is beyond my means. I am under no illusions. However, does the same apply to you? I felt something. When I looked in your eyes, I knew. Perhaps you are the one to whom we can entrust the Aegis's power. Father. In the end, it seems I only managed to make things worse. I can blame nothing but my own judgment. This tome records the deeds of the hero Adam. According to this, he saved the world from destruction using a white sword and then disappeared along with a red sword. White and red? It must mean Mithra and Pyrus swords. Whoever wrote this must have had a personal connection to Adam. And, most curiously, after Adam disappeared, the author of this book went looking for something. Something. The third Aegis sword. There's a third. Apparently, this sword was as transparent as diamond and gave off a clear, brilliant light. But Adam went his whole life without using the sword. In fact, he could not use it. What do you mean, couldn't? The sword was simply too powerful. Even he, the legendary hero, could not contain the power it commanded. And thus, fearing its power, he sealed it away somewhere. 
The author, therefore surmised that this sword alone was the one true sword of the Aegis. Now, Rex, you were defeated by Jin. Doubtless that man is a powerful warrior. But even so, can this be right? Can the Aegis herself truly be outmatched by a single opposing blade? Would it not make more sense to presume that you lost because you have yet to unlock the true power of the Aegis? You mean... I'm the one who's been holding them back? Your Majesty, where is that sword? We have to... we have to find it somehow. We have to find that sword and rescue Pyro and Mithra. Regrettably, the book does not specify the sword's location. But there must be. However, reading between the lines, it seems the author suspected that the sword lies somewhere in Leftheria. It's not much, but that's where I would begin the search. In left area. Are you ready? Huh? Are you ready to do what it takes to be their true driver? Gramps? Well, are you, Rex? Yes! Of course! I'm going to be the driver that Pyra and Mithra deserve. And then, I'm going to take them to Elysium. Then come with me. I'll show you the way. My son. Yeah? I have a favor to ask of you as your king. Well, that's a first. Are you feeling okay, old man? Maybe you're coming down with something. The Aegis needs... No, rather the boy needs protection. You mean Rex? Yes. I saw something in that boy's eyes. A light that must never go out. <laughs> Steady on, old man. People will get the wrong idea. Fine. Leave it to me. Thank you. Nah, it's not like I wasn't going to go with him anyway. You really can't judge a book by its cover. Who'd have thought that sweet-looking girl would threaten to destroy herself? Didn't she realize taking her own life would mean the boy died too? Oh, she knew exactly what she was doing. The whole thing was a bluff then? No, not at all. The reason she gave her core crystal to the boy was to replace his heart after Jin put paid to it. An Aegis core encodes the blueprints for all life. She took advantage of that. Incredible. I had no idea such a thing was possible. Aegises truly are a breed apart. Cores are constantly accumulating data about the outside world. The fact that their injuries are mirrored is a result of their twin cores exchanging information. If you wanted to be poetic about it, you could say that their very lives are intertwined. But there's nothing to stop her from severing that link. What do you mean? Before issuing the kill order to the Artifice, she would have transferred the remainder of her core to the boy. 
letting him live on, heart complete. An Aegis can survive for a short time without a core crystal. Don't ask me why. It's just how we were made. Ah, so that's the reason Jin agreed to her terms. He couldn't care less about the boy. But he wasn't about to lose this one. Simple as that. Komm mir nach Rex. Zuerst müssen wir zurück nach Funset. Zurück nach Hause? Red dich so undeutlich? Ja, nach Hause. Den Rest erkläre ich dir, wenn wir da sind. Komm. Okay. Boah, Leute, ein Part, in dem wir eigentlich nur Cutscenes hatten. Also wirklich nichts anderes als Cutscenes. Aber was für ein Part, liebe Leute. Halle verdammt nochmal, Luja. Das war ein großartiger äh, Part. Also ich hoffe, ihr findet genauso. Das war echt richtig, richtig. Ja, aber ich habe keine Ahnung, wo wir da hängen müssen. Äh, das ist der Hafen. Hier, Tofu wartet. So, ich hoffe, wir starten noch nicht gleich mit der Katze, wenn ich mit der Entwurf bin. Also, was, alles, was hier verschieden ist. Also erstens, äh, schöne Rede, Rex, dass er hier wieder den Schluss hat, hier zu starten. Die andere Frage, die wir uns hier stellen müssen, ist äh, die Sache, wenn es äh, drei äh, Egesse gibt, also bedeutet das, also, es gibt drei Egesse. Ich habe das jetzt nicht verstanden. Gibt es drei Schwerter? Das bedeutet, es gibt noch ein ultimatives Schwert. Oder es gibt noch eine weitere Aegis. Also ein Wesen, was hier noch äh, ebenfalls vom Helden Adam, oder nee, vom Praetor, damals nach unten geholt wurde, um hier der Menschheit zu helfen. Äh, was gibt's es noch alles? Ähm, das, was hier... Ähm, Melos am Ende gesagt hat, fand ich ehrlich gesagt ziemlich bedrückend, weil für mich hört sich das irgendwann an, irgendwie an, als würde sich Pyro irgendwann mal opfern, um hier Rex wieder ins Leben zu äh, geben. Was natürlich äh, zwar schön ist, dass Rex wieder lebt, aber gleichzeitig doch halt sehr traurig ist, wenn das bedeutet, dass wir dafür sie opfern muss müssen. Was haben wir noch alles? Äh, ehrlich gesagt, der Praetor, der hat ja schon ein bisschen, ein bisschen seltsam gewirkt. Aber aktuell wirklich, er, er plant ja irgendwas, ihr seht, er sammelt ja, er macht ja irgendein Ritual, das hat er ja gesagt. Und da ist jetzt natürlich die goldene Frage, was das genau sein soll. Ah, kann man auch schleudern, ne? Was das bedeutet, was für ein Ritual der hier durchführt, was für ein Ding. Ähm, und ob er hier wirklich noch einen anderen Plan, einen dunklen Rede. Äh, Punkte hat, die er hier durchführen will. Die Frage ist, wie wir jetzt die nächsten, weiß ich nicht, paar Stunden ohne Mifra und Power spielen sollen. Das weiß ich noch nicht, aber noch ein Bild. Was haben wir noch? Ich sage, es ist so mega viel. Ich mag, ich liebe an dem Spiel wirklich, dass Cutscenes halt nicht einfach nur da sind, wie in äh, manchen anderen Spielen, um halt einfach da zu sein, sondern dass sie halt wirklich mega mäßig äh, viel Story-Content haben, was alles wichtig ist. Elektrofeuer. Ah, awesome. Ach, liebe Leute, ich bin echt baff. War ein großartiger Part, liebe Leute. Und äh, ich habe ja fast schon vermutet, dass wir wieder zurückgehen. Und ich denke, jetzt wird es mal hier ein bisschen etwas über Rex Eltern erzählt. Nun gut, bevor wir jetzt aber hier erstmal zurückgehen, machen wir einen kleinen Cut und beim nächsten Mal geht's weiter mit Let's Play Zen Chronicles 2. Bis zum nächsten Mal und vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Ciao.